Hey, welcome back to the Build It Basement. Today is episode number 17 on our Voron build. Uh, real excited to get back in this a little bit. Been cruncher time real bad. Uh, but if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. So you'll be the first to get notified if you ring that bell when I do drop new videos uh, on this build or any other builds I do here moving up towards doing um, possibly another Voron soon. Um, looking at the light in the tunnel on this and um, pretty excited. Um, so something else coming in store for that. Uh, so where we're at. So working on the wiring harness, and I will tell you firsthand that the more crimping you do, the better you will be. Um, it's one of those practice makes perfect things. And I can't do it perfectly, um, but I'm getting pretty good at it. I'm going to do a few crimps here on the bench. I did some last videos, um, or last video, I should say. So I'm going to do a couple more today. Um, let's see what I got here. So... Uh, that's not the end I want. Been working on the harness. Um, so basically using these, uh, I think they called micro three um, connectors. Um, I mean, they're not difficult to do if you do a bunch, but uh, they're fun, right? You know, learning something. Uh, also going to go into the chain adapters for the three hole uh, chains that you get with some of the Voron kits, uh, at least with the Formbot kit and possibly some others. Uh, it's just the lesser expensive chain that you're going to find around. Um, so I'm going to talk about that. I'm actually printing an adapter right now that we'll look at. Uh, and I will put on the printer today along with a modified part uh, for the Z or Z axis uh, that also has uh, a three pin or a three hole in it to mount that chain. So let's get into it. Do a little bit of crimping. Grab the printer, throw it up here. Show you those parts. And uh, it's a video, right? So stand by oh one more thing too um came up with an idea and my idea is and i mentioned before uh i'm doing all black wiring not only is it what came with the form box kit i'm trying to stay with it as much as possible um not to prove a point or anything but just because that's what the kit came with um do plan on doing a modification or two or three or a dozen at some point but building what i have so want to use the black wire I think it's going to look neat. Uh, this is silicone wire. Um, you know, you could use a PTFE wire if you want to buy it separately. It did not come with the kit. It comes with silicone. But I think I'll be fine, at least for the short term. By short term, this stuff's probably good for a few years. Um, so, nightmare, because it's all black, is probably what you're thinking. Um, my idea. Yeah. So, I got white heat shrink. And with the white heat shrink, I bought a ton of Sharpies. And what I plan on doing is doing rings on my wires. So those rings will be color coded. Um, I work in RF or radio. Um, we do radio systems, we do antennas a lot. And on a tower, usually we mark those uh, cables with color codes, color stripes. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna mark our wires with color stripes. I'm not gonna mark every single wire. I'm just gonna mark some of the wires, the ones that we need to mark. Uh, obviously, um, you know, on the fan, we only need to mark one, or the fans, I should say. Uh, on other ends, we might have to mark both, but that's my plan. Going to do some rings. We'll go into that real quick in the video as well, uh, and probably do one or two of those. Um, so, again, let's get into it. Let's do a couple crimps. All right. Let the fun commence here, right? So really see you on that one there we'll go uh let's do this there we go all right ah oh, so uh what i'm crimping right now honestly was an oversight and that oversight specifically was on the induction probe the induction probe comes with a wire that is about half a meter or a foot and a half too short to use directly. So, had to cut it. And the trash it goes, right? So, extending those wires, we've already gone ahead, or I've already gone ahead off camera and put a, uh, a, um, what would it be? It'd be a male end on the actual induction probe and now we're going to crimp on the females so now that i've done a few dozen more of these i'm not going to say i am a pro but 
I do have some additional tips. And of course, tip number one, and I already kind of alluded to it and mentioned it, is practice. Um, I don't know if practice makes perfect, but practice makes better, right? So let me get these twisted up. And we're going to snip a couple of these back. Actually, all three of these back a little bit. They're a little long. They do need to be relatively short. In actuality, in the scheme of things, if you did leave them long, where did I put my clips? If you did leave them long, it's probably not going to affect you very much. Um, because these are all in channels, the chances are that these wires aren't going to cross. You can also test them if you're really worried about it. I won't say that they've manufactured stuff to be idiot proof, but there is some engineering and some thought that goes into it. So, and I'm going to see if I can move this up just slightly here. There you go. So I don't have to work on my knuckles. So on the last video, I talked about how to crimp these and how to crimp and then to crimp the, um, the wire on first. And I'm still sticking with that. Um, but I have found a couple of additional tips I'd like to share. One is holding your crimpers. When you're holding your crimpers, hold them so the pocket is facing you. So basically this bottom segment here is facing towards you. Your crimp goes in so the open part is also facing towards you. So you are basically inserting your crimp portion into your crimpers like so. Okay. Boom. 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 Show up. Show up. Come on. You can do it. There we go. All right. So once you have that, they'll they'll stick right in there. They're not going to fall out. That's a plus, right? Get them in there. Throw your wire in. And on the wire, you want to basically. Well, first of all, make sure you don't have any flying portions of that wire but you want to basically get in there so that the sheathing of the wire is beyond the first and you know you're on the second give it a good squeeze done that's it come back you can even use your fingers give the whole thing a squeeze that will reclose up your sheathing crimp and give those a quick one we're getting pretty good here. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Look at that. If you do 30 or 40 crimps, you can do that too. Right? It's not that difficult. Like I said, a little bit of practice. That's all it takes. While waiting for that, instead of you guys watching me do this, I'll talk a little bit about... Um... Well, let's go ahead and put this over to my Cave Ender 5. So printing off the three hole chain uh, connection for the top of the Z axis on the, um, the Voron here. Uh, it's a modification of the one that comes with the kit uh, or with the STL files for the kit um and those I, I send a link in the previous uh video again but uh that's available on the github uh, i'll put another link in this video but basically there are um this guy right here which is an adapter plate so to speak uh and then there is also your let's see that's the upper that's what it looks like it adapts onto what's currently there on your motor um and then on the lower side of things where is it right there that's your guy and do they show that i guess i can show the stl for that one too uh and that's what that looks like too it's just a modification of the original on the other side of this can i flip this around oh yeah look at that so you can see the three hole mounting uh, segment right there it's kind of hard going white on white but 
Uh, now I use those uh, the slightly cheaper chains that come with some of these kits. And I think, I think we just finished up. All right. I'm going to grab that real quick. Let's do, let's do this. All right. Let me go grab. Uh, you know what? I'm going to let that cool off first. ABS, I let it cool off before I pull it off. Um, I find if it gets shocked too much, uh, sometimes they can peel. All right, so let's do this other wire while we wait for that to happen. We got two crimped. Let's get the third one done. Again, this is for my probe, which, again, um, the difficult part of that was crimping on the uh, the connectors to the actual probe itself, cutting back the wires and um, and doing that simply because it was on the printer already. I, I could have taken it off the printer, but um, why would I do something easy? You know, I'm kind of a glutton for punishment, right? Building my own harness. Going hardcore. I'm one of those guys that kind of figures that if I do it all, look at that. If I do it all, then when I run into trouble, because no matter what, I'm going to run into trouble, um, I'll know how to fix it. I'll know what to do when that time comes. All right, give me one second. I'll check my printer. I don't know what connection I'm using on this. And it is all but that guy right there. So... We're going to slide these inserts in. I'm going to block off this one. That's our unused. And let's see here. I believe, I believe we're going like this. Or it could be like this. Ooh, you know what? I didn't finish that one. You guys didn't tell me. See, this is a good reason to do a live stream. Not that anybody would tell me anyways, but... jumping around like i said i'm excited just to get a little time to work on this today um had a lot going on here at the house like i said in the previous year i got a new puppy actually rebuilding the kitchen just so much wish i wish i wish i had more time We'll get in there sometimes i have a little trouble getting these in um and i guess it's pretty common um use a pair of tweezers get better video now sorry i use a pair of tweezers when that happens and that's the last one there we go clicked right in all right so we got this guy so we'll add that to our bunch. Bunch right here. And cut this zip tie off. Zip tie is kind of a placeholder. Put these all together for me. And what I've done is um, my twosies are for, uh, well, actually, this is for the hot end. Uh, this is using a 20 gauge wire, slightly larger wire gauge. Uh, just basically do the ad additional um, uh, current going through there. Uh, I got fan. I got fan. I've got um, a thermistor. I've got the inductive probe. And then I've got the extruder motor right there with four on it. So my inductive probe is using four horizontal, whereas my extruder is using a four square. So it's going to be hard to mess those up. But it's going to be even harder once we mark these a little bit. And you watch, this is going to kick my butt. All right, there we go. Some sharpies. Now... I'm hoping that this heat shrink will get down the size I need it. It said 316, 
but it has a three to one ratio. So I guess before we get too far, I'm gonna see I'm gonna see how small this gets. Cause uh, that's huge right now. So let's oh yeah. Okay. It's not horrible. So it does have a three to one shrink. That's pretty good. All right. That shall work. All right, we're gonna drag that this way. And we're gonna grab these. And they're gonna confuse me a little bit. There we go. So first things first, I'm gonna cut off some ring. And yes, I could have put these on before I did the wires. It would have been easy. I wouldn't have to run over the whole wire. But the problem is I didn't have the heat shrink at the time. So we're going to do primary color type thing here. This plain Jane. Um, we don't want any confusing colors. Purple. Purple over brown, brown can be black, depending on how much light you got. So, here's the plan. We're going to color this heat shrink. And it's not quite as impressive as the painting video Nero did recently, but if he can paint, then I can color. Right? Good. All right, so there's our yellow. And yes, I could have bought multiple colors of heat shrink. And I attempted to do that, but finding multiple colors of heat shrink that are all small is a little bit of a nightmare. Um, and I already have trouble sleeping, so. I don't need another nightmare. All right. Let's see. There's red. Okay. Every once in a while, I try to come up with something different than not everybody else is doing. I mean, honestly. Um, I have spent a little bit of time here and there when I have spare time watching some videos and it looks like everybody and their mom is building a Voron right now. Um, so just trying to do something slightly different than what other people are doing, at least something, you know? So here's the plan. Um, this is the last one I'm going to do. I'm not going to spend the whole half hour or 45 minutes, whatever here, coloring pieces of heat shrink, but they should get more defined when they shrink them. The color should really compress, right? Um, is I'm color coding right now with these rings what they are driving, and then there will be a corresponding color on the other end of the wires. So let me cut this one off. So for some things like the thermistor, um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what, you know, which wire is which. On other things, it's going to. So like on the thermistor, all I need is this one ring. On some of the other things, I'm going to need a ring, and I'm also going to have to mark other colors, um, you know, positive, negative, or um, specifically like on, on the... Um, on the uh, steppers, you know, I'm gonna have to mark those slightly differently. So um, let's do that real quick. So let's grab, since we just did it, our do -do -do, inductive probe. And we're, pull this wire down. And I'm going to make the inductive probe purple. 
because I feel purple. Actually, it might have been a purple. No, that's blue, black, and blue, black, and gray. I think. Oh, blue, black, and brown, maybe. Um, speaking of which, the brown wire on the inductive probe that came with the Formbot kit it's thinner than the other wires. It was on. I had to um, I had to crimp it three different times to get the to go. I thought I was doing something wrong, and I realized that the wires are smaller. So there we go. So I have purple on there. And if I was smart, I would have made two, but I don't need two yet because these are all going to get cut down the size eventually. So let that heat up. It's going to do two things. It's going to help hold the wires together a little bit. And it's also going to help me mark them, like I was saying. So what we've done basically is just put a rubber band or... Now, not a rubber, a heat shrink band around our wires to help mark them. I'm gonna fill in the void here. I have a little bit of white poking through. There we go. So on the side here, I got a spreadsheet going um, where I am writing down purple, um, you know, equals inductive probe. And then basically color code the wires to match the inductive probe colors. Uh, simple, right? Just going to do the one. All right. So on with the show. Let's get... Well, let's do two things. Let's get our part out of the printer. And let's get the printer up here. Set that aside, set that one aside. Trash, save. We're gonna have to make more room here in a second. But, just bear with me. And you know what we'll do? We'll do that. And... Yeah, not looking at a blank screen or anything. Um, So, here we go. And this is our piece, our adapter. It's going to require a couple heat certs. So we have our three holes for our, our drag chain with three holes. And we have our two holes for mounting on to the printer. So you're gonna grab the printer here and lug it up. Get move these out of the way. Planning on my part. All right, there she blows, right? So there's the inductive probe with the four wide um, or four horizontal uh, connector. Um, only need three of the four wires, blue, brown, and black on that. I left it long enough so I can still use the guide that's on here uh, and then come off it from there. So the adaption pieces. I talked about this briefly on the other video. This is part number one. Um, actually, this is the original part uh, that comes in the STLs for the Voron uh, with the two hole. And this is the modified part with the three hole that will need heat search. So we'll put those in in a second. What just happened here? Hmm. Looks like I don't recall flipping this thing upside down. Yeah. Someplace. 
my um, my pin in some place. We'll have to find that. All right, so heat certs, KBS two seventy. Let's turn it down. Go down to right now two ten, and go back to this picture here. And let's see. Lower mount inserts. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So we got to put our certs into that. So let me grab some. A little unorganized tonight. But we'll make it work. And let's see here. that guy right there and we need three of the certs and we need a soldering iron i need more bench area is what i need So starting with number one. Yo. Number two. And number three. There we go. All right. So we're looking at right there nice so next one up is going to be the the top adapter let's see here upper mount with certs okay uh let's see here so on this one they did it in black i did it in blue what the hey right all right so i need three more certs on that Again, um, you know, try and do everything the kits in here. And I haven't looked in the manual so much tonight, so because this stuff is not in the manual, um, there are tons and tons and tons of modifications for the Boron. Um, I plan on getting this thing built, and honestly, some of the video now is going to get a little bit more scarce because nobody wants to watch me route wires and 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 you know crimp hundred connectors. Um, but once I get over this hump. And getting the software I'm gonna do some in-depth stuff there with clipper and whatnot big fan of clipper so um yeah so let's do this real quick let's get the heat certs in this guy let's do this and soldering iron again actually let's just do this All right, so I 
I've seen plenty of method where people have actually God. Huh. plenty of um, different methods where people have done everything from new zip ties um, to kind of ignore things, drill out their cables. Uh, but these modified files are readily available. No reason not to use them. And something like a drag chain. Honestly, if you're going to cheap out on something on your build, even if you are going to source your own parts, um, you know, if, if there's something you're going to cheap out on, drag chain is probably a good one to do it. If you need to save the five bucks or something, um, spend the extra money on your, on your steppers or something. So this is a really good usable mod. Actually, before I forget, give credit. Let's see here. Ah, oh, see, uh, kilo cubit. So we'll credit kilo cubit on that. I did print this off pretty quick for. Render five, it's a little rough, but for what it is, it should be just fine. All right, there we go. So there's our modified top and bottom pieces right there. Yeah. So this guy is going to wind up back here. This guy is going to wind up getting mounted on here. Let's see if I can get a little better view on that. About blocking everything. Whoa! Camera down. It's a fun, huh? So close. Come on, guy. There you go. There we go. All right. So we're going to use the two original mounting holes and the original um, mounting block that goes in the back there. And I will finally, for the first time in this video, bring up the manual. So let's do this. All right. Actually, I want that one. Me small, screen big. All right, what do they show? They show that we have that one. We have the three hole connection for that. Z and then they're not showing much when it comes to that top drag chain that way. Okay, that's the bottom. Hmm. All right. Er. Gotta love that. Let's keep looking here a little bit. That's it. All right, so not much to go by there. So pretty sure what we're doing is installing our nuts, our M3 nuts into that and then utilizing those because I did print that pretty quick those things are a little tight get those real quick And now they're threaded, huh? Yeah. Here we go. Uh, 
Perfect. All right. So we got those in our chain, our Z chain. So our Z chain, what's the best camera for this? Thought I had, let's see here, wide width close with wide. Nope. 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 There we go. I guess that'll kind of work. No, let's do this. do this first okay so our Z chain pretty much is going to be mounting like so I want to make sure that I situate this in the proper direction so what do we need we need some uh, I'll see if I can see anything here they tell us what to use M3 by 12s on that. Why are they using M3 by 12s? Seems awful long. Hmm. Okay. Uh, M3 by 12s. Grab those. Can't get away with it. M3. Much smaller M3, but. You know what, I'm gonna grab a couple of M3x8s. Because we didn't use them every single hole in the rail to get tons of these left over. I can grab the M3x12s right there. Noting. And these are M3x12s. So this this these make sense to use M3x12s on these ones because let's see here. This is going to this is going to mount like that I guess we could go through it but it's going to mount if this is going to be this way and this needs to also be facing upwards so this is going to mount like this with our m3 by 12s going through I expect us to do it like that. Okay. M3 by 12 is going through like this. And Let's see if this works here. Okay, and then this on the back side. Okay, M3 by 12 is definitely the right length for this. Otherwise, we wouldn't make it. Actually, I'm not sure if we're making it with the M3 by 12, to be honest. Should be pretty close though. Let's see here. So close. Come on. Just grab. What is going on? I don't think we're making it. So close. Come on. Uh, these nuts are going to fall out. Come on. So this is one of those times that you could say that if I was doing this off video, it would work the first time. It'd be a lie. I'd be struggling either way. All right. The bottom one caught. Now, Mr. Toffee here, I know he's going to be in the right area. Why on earth is it not 
grabbing. No good way of seeing where it is, really. Ah, uh, all right. Let's 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 grab a magnet. You know how much I like magnets. Let's grab a magnet. It's on the end here. I'm gonna grab that. Never mind. It fell out. All right. I can see the end of my screw. So this is frustrating right here. I can see him right there. Let's tighten down this one a little bit more, I guess. And then I'm just going to squeeze, I guess, that until it grabs, because it should be grabbing. I have no explanation as to why it's not. So, stand by and watch me get frustrated. So it's fun, right? All right. Close. All right. Well, we're not going to struggle with that anymore for right now. That's basically where that mounts. Okay, so now you get your you get your adapter there, and that enables you to be able to screw in your Z cable chain. Put one screw in that for now. Do, 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 do. All right. All right. One screw in there. And more or less just for demo purposes, put one more screw down here. All right, so something like that. Boom, right on. All right, now we have our X and Y chains. And if I recall correctly, one of them is slightly longer than the other and my gantry is completely out of whack right now. I know it doesn't really matter all that much. It makes me feel bad. So let's grab that camera out of there. Helping us much. Let's move this all the way to the front. All the way to the extension this way. So you're going to want to move your, your X and Y all the way over. Um, when it comes time that you want to start mounting. And... I just want to see which one of these is which. So this one. Maybe it doesn't matter much. This one goes there, I think. And then I don't have my tool head on here right now, but that's going to wind up like that. And... Just for show. 
All right. That's going to go there. So, um, yeah. So I really wish I could have done more today on this video. Um, like I said, I, not a lot of time. I really don't. Um, but I'm going to find more time, I promise. Um, but I do want to go over those modification parts that you can get. I suggest you print off if you are doing it. Again, the links of those products, those parts are going to be down in the description. Uh, they are available on GitHub. Um, print them off before you start building, while you're building, whatever, something will work. Uh, practice on your crimping. Um, crimping ain't easy, but um, you'll get the hang of it, you know? Got to get your crimp hand strong. Cheesy, maybe. Um, also working on some of my gear. I don't know if you noticed, but my audio, uh, my video, I get so much going on, really. Um, I'm going to take care of quite a few things on this before I come back to the next video and then kind of do an overview of what I've done. Um, once I get to that point, I, I think I'd like to come back with basically all my wiring harness ran. It's pretty self-explanatory on that. I will go over how that's put through the actual cable chains, but other than that, it's going to be run. Um, and I'm going to start on basically wiring that into the controller down bottom and software. Like to get this up and running in probably two, maybe three more videos. Call it lucky number 20. Um, but until then, subscribe if you haven't and get a hold of me. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you want to see. Uh, like I said before, earlier in the video, um, already planning on doing another build after this one. So um, let me know if you have any suggestions. How about that? Uh, and I'll see you next time.